a subscriber and believer from the United Kingdom asked me about Oliver Cromwell. Well, I know about Oliver Cromwell because I studied British history also from Roman Britain until the British Empire, whatever you want to call an empire, but until Brexit. I don't want to talk about Brexit at all because, man, that whole thing is upsetting, but okay. About Cromwell, I, I must give you background of what happened before. There was a civil war on the British Isles. At the time, he didn't have the Great Britain yet. He had the Kingdom of Scotland, the Kingdom of England, which, which included the Principality of Wales. Wales was seen as a sub-nation of the English, and she had the Kingdom of Ireland. So, he had three kingdoms. They were ruled from London. And, well, the people had to get along. But they didn't. It ended up in a civil war. It doesn't matter who started the civil war, civil war happened. And there were Puritans. Puritans are that cult of Christ followers. Some of them were real believers, don't get me wrong, but still, the, their ideology is cultish. They wanted to have everything pure for Christ. And they were against the Jesuits and against the Vatican's rule of the world. So, this guy from the Puritans stands up and he expels um, the king by executing him. And he, not only the king was executed, others were royalists were also done away with. So, England, Scotland and Ireland became a republic. And he was the Lord Protector. Well, after a while, the Parliament, the Republican Parliament that he installed, lost, tr lost their trust in him, so he became a dictator, and eventually he died. Well, he also suffered from um, suspicious. Um, he, he was kind. He became quite manic and suspicious. Some scientists of the day even claim that he might have had a bipolar disorder or borderline or whatever. Now look, what about Oliver Cromwell? Okay, let's say he was a real believer. Let's take a, the best case scenario, okay? I'm not sure whether he was a real believer or not. Let's say he was a real believer and he really intended to expel the shadow government from the British Isles so that they are free from that oppression. If that's the case, then he was deceived. If he wasn't born again, and he was just a religious fanatic, then that, that would explain the rest of what happened. Because look, in order to judge an historical figure, look at the fruits. Okay. Do you say fruit? from multiple English or fruits. So I hear people say fruits, or only say fruit. Okay, but anyway, I'll say fruit for now. Look at the fruit of a sober figure. Don't look at their intentions, look at the fruit. Because the fruit will reveal how they really were on the inside. And the fruit will also reveal who was the use of them, if they were being used. And looking at Cromwell, that man was not smart. I'm, used, I'm very polite here. <sighs> he made some very dumb decisions. First of all, you can't finally expel a head of state and suddenly think that the tensions among the people are gone. There were many uprisings against the new republic, which he used violence to suppress. So don't admit it. It was violence suppressing the people, peoples of the British Isles. Okay? That was happening. We're not going to deny that. So now we use violence to expel the violence. But there's still violence amongst the people. There was a civil war, remember? So now, you have to use that same violence to keep the people calm. So you're still stuck in violence. 
you should stop in negative energy. That's one thing that reveals that he did not operate in agreement with Christ. Secondly, he had an enormous trust in the military. Now, first of all, the military needs to be paid. The military is an Apollonistic institution. I've said this before on previous videos of mine. War is a hoax. Okay? The fights are real locally, but because those fights are orchestrated behind the scenes, the outcomes have been determined long before, but war itself is a hoax. And the military is an Apollonistic institution, that means that it's meant to bring blood sacrifices to Apollo or Helios. That's why the military exists. Many think the military exists just to defend one's ethnicity or one's country or one's culture or to intervene. Now, it happens that people use the military to intervene in racial conflicts and they do good things. There are soldiers doing good things. I'm not, not denying that, but I'm not talking about the individual soldiers here. Of course, you have soldiers that want to do good and do good things, but the institution of no, see, the, mil the military as an institution is apolonistic. It's intended to break down men, young men mentally, to turn them into killing machines, to send them out as sacrifice for Apollo and to sacrifice others. That's it. And the pagan rules of the world, they use the military to intoxicate the human population with fear and anxiety, and later through the entertainment industry and through the media, especially mainstream media today, they relieve the population. That's the game of duality that the big rulers are doing. And this has been going on since the foundation of the Greek Empire. Around 300 BC, this Apollonistic world order was installed, and around 200 BC, it was um, really, um, it, it was established in practice. And since then, since 100 BC, all wars have been hoaxes. That's why Christ said not to be um, distracted by rumors of wars. He said wars and rumors of wars. Because Christ knew to reveal the real truth that wars are all hoaxes would be too strong for the people back then. So that's why he said wars and rumors of wars. But when you think about it, all those wars were hoaxes. It were the rumors of wars that was spread by the media at the time you didn't have mainstream media yet, local leaflets or local newspapers, not newspapers like we have today, but those, yeah, those big letters that were the newspapers of the time when Christ walked the earth. And you had um, uh, witnesses that were, sp that were spread the news around. Those were the media at the time. It's the rumors of wars that terrify the people, thinking that the war is real while it's not. Those are orchestrated fights locally, in which the outcomes are, are already determined beforehand. The reason I mention this is because Cromwell, if he knew what he was fighting, would have realized that war is a hoax. So for you to invest in an Apollonistic institution like he did, he spent quite some money on it, that's quite weird. And it's another thing. Land is important. Because without land, you, don't, you can't produce as a farmer. And at the time, farming was quite important for the economy. And under the rule of the Blue Bloods, because it's the Blue Bloods dynasties that ruled Europe and the world, or the trans elites, okay? And they as parasites exploited the people. So their vessels, the local castle lords, they exploited the people. And the people wanted Cromwell to redistribute the land, to redistribute the wealth, to bring justice. Cromwell didn't want to do it. Hold on a minute. If you're inspired by the Bible, let's say he was not born again, he didn't have the Holy Spirit, he was just inspired by the Bible. Then he should be inspired by the years of Jubilee. Then he should be inspired by the Old Testament in which land redistribution was common to make sure that there was justice amongst the people, that nobody owned too much at expense of the others. He didn't do it. So let me get this straight. The trans elites or the blue bloods who worship Apollo, who are ruled by transgenders, trans witches, and trans warlocks, they exploit the people. They have this oppressive economy. Now you take over 
to fight against injustice, but the injustice has been established, you leave it. So the established injustice, you don't deal with it? Uh, okay, that's a contradiction. Final and not least, that man had no knowledge how to deal with local conflicts. And as a ruler, you need to know how to deal with local conflicts. And here's the thing, the British also had many local conflicts. And the Irish people were exploited by the English all the time. On the Cromwell, it continued. And to make matters worse, there were even Irish people that lost land, that lost their homes under Cromwell. Why? Money had to be spent on the military or in other and other projects that were not related to the well-being and welfare of the people. Let's forget the best case scenario because I don't really believe the best case scenario right now. Okay, I can be wrong, but I don't believe that because anyone would have looked at the situation who would have been alive back then would realize this man, this man is out of his mind. I mean, think about it. France, because I need to give you a background of situation in France. Was it was the same size as today? The land mass increased or decrease, but one in three, or better said, around forty to forty-five percent of your of your population was French. Okay, and the French therefore had the ability to ex extend their navy. Or the, or the military. So if Cromwell would extend the British military so much, that would provoke a reaction from France. And France is just across the English Channel. So what he was doing was also inviting violence to the people he was governing. So what, is, what does this say to you? It exists that people oppose the shadow government, that they oppose the trans elites. It happened throughout history. In 1795, the Dutch people, they got enough of the trans elites and they kicked them out. <sighs> Great, that happened then. The more, the more cases in history when it happened. In 1911, I believe, in China, they kicked out the imperial regime. Finally! So it happens throughout history that the local population gets tired. Of the exploitation and kick them out and I rejoice in that. Unfortunately, just because they resist the evil doesn't mean they automatically align with the good. Listen what I'm saying, just because you resist something that's evil doesn't mean that automatically you align your line with the good. Let me give us a quick parable. Let's say you have a Portuguese king, I'm just naming something, who's out of his mind, who's spending the money of the country like crazy. And now there are 10 um, rich men that come together and agree we need to kick that guy out. And they manage to kick the guy out. So now that bad and mad king is out, what are they going to do now? Whose interest is going to become dominant? Because whose interests are going to be honored, which are going to be suppressed? But none of those 10 men had any idea what to do after the evil was gone. So they deceived themselves into thinking that by fighting that evil, uh, that they, they were on the right side. They, they deceived themselves because they didn't look beyond. So now that the Portuguese king is gone, the country's complete chaos is worse off than before. So there's more harm coming from the, the expelling of the Portuguese king than, than good is coming from it. And in the case of Cromwell, it appeared like a solution but was really a trap, both for Cromwell and for the English, Irish and Scottish nations. If Cromwell would have remained longer alive and he would have succeeded in all his plans, I could see clearly that either France would have invaded the British Isles, or they would have gotten in trouble with Spain, and Spain had a very big name at the time, I remember they possessed most of the Americas. And you also had the Dutch Republic that also had a very, very big navy. So if he would have remained alive and all his plans would have succeeded, man, 
I'm not sure if would, there would be anything left of the economy or even the welfare of the British House. Look, if you want to get rid of tyranny, acknowledge your tyranny, but see through it. See through it means you look at the big picture and you, you know what's really going on. If you don't see through it, you are deceived. Any decision you make against the tyranny, but, but lacking the wider perspective, any of such decisions will be self-defeating and self-destructive. Even if you succeed in those decisions, will be self-destructive. And you know what? This is what the pagan rulers of the world back then did. They came together, whether it was in Rome, or Ravenna, or whatever Italian town uh, city it was, they came together and they thought, you know what? This Cromwell, he has, he has guts. He has courage. He, he fought against us. But, um, he's not fully in line with Christ. And Christ, our enemy, because to those big rules, Christ is our enemy. Christ, our enemy, is the only one that can really defeat us. So only those that are aligned with him can successfully push us away. He's not in line with Christ. And then a few months later, they get reports, and they're, huh? This criminal kicked us out, but he's investing in the military, which is an Apollonistic institution that we maintain. What? The Bengals thought, you know what? Let's wait for 10, maybe 15 years, when Britain is completely falling apart, and then we'll send some pirates to terrify the people. And when everything's collapsing there, then we'll present a solution, which is the restoration of the kingdom. Well, fake kingdom. What people think is a real kingdom. And you know what? That is what the big rules did. So what do we learn from Cromwell? Look beyond. Seriously, look beyond. Look, if Cromwell wants to do it wisely, he should not have executed the king, he should, should just have kicked them out. He should have kicked them out, he should have restored uh, land ownership, he should have boosted the economy by either um, minting more currency, by debasing the currency, or by, I don't know, do something with the in English colonies, because they also had colonies back then. He should have done those things to make sure that the population um, became, was better off. If he would have done that, then there, wa then there wasn't that this tyrannical hold on the population anymore. The only thing he did was he removed a symptom, but not a cause. We didn't deal with the cause of it. So, to see Oliver Cromwell as his Protestant hero, it goes too far. He did a good thing by expelling, uh, I mean he didn't expel, he killed him, but he really expelled the Jesuit vassal state. But he didn't replace it with anything better. What he came with was far worse. But it's only because he died before his time that the worst did not happen to Britain. And even the politicians in Britain back then realized, hold on a minute, we, we can better go back to um, the kingship era, because we don't know how to do this. Look, am I a supporter of those uh, trans elites? No, absolutely not. But in order to succeed and to last, you need to see through things. When you see through things, you can see all the obvious, all the possibilities, and you deal with the root of things. So, again, just because you fight against something that's evil does not mean when you're aligned with the good. And if thing, even if you have a whole a bunch of people fight against injustice, if they're not in line with Christ, what happens is they will just get some relief from the injustice. But sooner or later, bigger injustice will come and take its place. Christ gave a parable. If you have someone that was possessed by an evil spirit and the evil spirit cast out, the evil spirit will uh, roam around the earth, roam throughout the earth in dry place, like in desert or where, whatever, to find peace. 
But being an evil spirit means you will never find peace. Good, of course you can't if you're an evil spirit. So the evil spirit will long back to the individual he possessed. But when he arrives, things are better off with the individual. The individual is relieved. If the individual is not delivered and renewed in his or her mind, the evil spirit has access to return. But the evil spirit now will secure his dwelling place. So now he will ask for the help of gangs of other demons and they will come and together will repossess an individual. And in this case, it will be far off, far worse off with an individual than was before. When you fight against injustice, but you're not in line with Christ, that fight will be self-defeating. You will have a victory, but it will be very short-lived, and you will not see it short-lived. That's why when you uproot evil, or when you uproot oppression, do it Christ's way. Because then you remain safe from evil, so that they won't have any side effects on you, and the results you have will be far more lasting. Now, I'm recording this video to inspire you to not um, follow Cromwell's example. Okay? Don't idolize Cromwell. Agree with Christ and make sure you do far better than Cromwell did. Well, that's it for now. Agree with Christ and be at peace.